pledge to make it. Those of you who are on the band. Once again, I'm coming from uh, 1 Kings 3, starting at, uh, starting at 5.
So we have an alliance. God bless you, Elder. It's so good to see you. God bless you. <laughs> right? So that's what's happening, right? Because we don't have, we're, we're short for time, right? So he just opens up and he makes an alliance, right? Um, let me see. It says that it was um, the city of David. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace. So the city of David, it's also Jerusalem. It's called the city of David. He brought her there until he was um, building, until he finished building his palace, the temple of the, of the Lord, and the wall around Jerusalem. So Solomon was really busy. This was, he was a builder. This man was really busy. It says the people, however, were still sacrificing in high places, right? Because the temple hadn't been built. So these people would just go to these open places. And some of the places where the Canaanites, the pagans, would sacrifice. But they, the temple wasn't built, so they took their sacrifices to these high places. It's like these hills, like the hilltops. Because the temple of the Lord wasn't built. It says, but Solomon showed his love. Um, for the Lord by walking in the by walking in the instructions given to him by his father. His father gave him instructions. God bless you, sir. Amen. Right? And you all could jump in if you want to. So Solomon, God bless you, Sister Gladys, and God bless you, Deacon McCoy, Sister Patricia, Jasmine, and I bless everybody else right now. Say good morning. Right? So Solomon, it says he showed his love for the Lord, right? He was walking in accordance to the Lord. Right, and the instruction that his father David gave him. But look what it says, except that he offered sacrifices and burnt incense and on the high places. So we could be doing, we could love God, right? But does anybody have an exception in your life? Right? I love God. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, except you know what? I'm doing, I'm doing something. I'm doing a little something, something here on the side. Yeah, I'm going to church, I'm going to Sunday school, I'm singing in the choir, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But look what it says, it says accept. So it's just something for you all to think about. Do y'all have some exceptions in your life? Is there some exceptions? All right, that stood out to me, right? <clears throat> so it says accept that he offers sacrifice. And then it says, um, it says, the king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was one of the most high places. And Solomon offered, so he's offering his sacrifices on the altar. And while he was there, right, Solomon um, slept, right? He, he had a dream while he was there. He had a dream. And in his dream, God says to him, ask whatever you want me to give you. What do you want? Right? Even now, right? God says now, it doesn't just apply to Solomon. Even now, God says, ask and it shall be given, right? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door is going to be open. So it's just this just doesn't apply to Solomon, but Solomon had a dream. And God said, What do you want? And whatever you want is going to be given to you. And what did Solomon ask for? He asked for wisdom. And I said to myself, well, he's not going to ask for riches because he's a king. Right? But some people, even though they're rich, they want more. Ask for more riches. Right? Because at first I read that, I said, well, what else would he ask for? He has, you know, he's a king. He's a builder. Right? So he's, he's good with his hands. Right? Any woman would want to marry some man who knows how to build. Right? Hey, I have this door hanging. Whatever. Right? So he asked for wisdom. He asked for wisdom. And I thought, I says, well, God, you come to people in their dreams, right? Right? God came to Jacob in a dream, right? God came to Jacob. Remember, Jacob was in a dream. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, right? God came to Jacob in a dream. He came to Daniel in a dream, right? He came to Joseph in a dream. So God comes to people in dreams. I know some of us don't remember our dreams, right? But God still comes to us. If it's not in a dream, he'll come to us in a vision. God still talks to us. And when I said, when I read this, it says, you know what? It says Solomon loved the Lord except, right? So you could love the Lord and you could have some exceptions. But guess what? God is, this let me know that God is still with you, right? 
We're not going to do everything perfect. We're going to make some side steps. We're going to have some mishaps. It's going to happen. But it says that he loved the Lord, except he was doing these sacrifices in these high places. But look what happened. God still came to him. He still loves him. So it's just like you and I. Yeah, we love God. And we have some exceptions. Yeah, I'm coming to church. I'm doing this except, you know, when the lights are out, you know, doing a little something, something. Except we have some exceptions in our life, but God still is with you. God still is with you. None of us are perfect, and we're not going to we're not going to be perfect. That's why we have to ask God daily to renew us daily. We have to. Right? So that's this is what's happening. So he says, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness. He said, you show great kindness. You know what? I'm just going to paraphrase it. You know, God, I'm, I'm overruling all your people. There's so many, there's so many, I can't even count. So many, I, millions, I can't count. And you have a few people, everyone has a few personalities. It's hard, right? Over, uh, it's hard overseeing people, and everyone has a different personality. If you say one thing here, it might, you might say it the wrong way or whatever the case. Everyone has a personality. So can you imagine being the king overseeing a nation, a country? He's like, God, I'm young. And he's young. And he's young. Like a lot of us, we could oversee certain things because through experience, life taught us. Life taught us. Well, you know what? I, I, was, I was your age. I was your age. But this guy is young, right? The Bible says, or background reading says he was in his 20s. So he says, God, you know what? I'm young. I'm a child. Look how humble he is. He didn't just take the thing that, you know what? I have a title, and it's all about me. He, he was still humble. It's, he was like his father. He was still humble like his father. Even though David had the affair with Bathsheba, and he regretted it. That's why he wrote Psalms 50. One, David was grieving. He's like, God, I can't even praise you like I used to. Please, please put your praise back on my lips. David was humble. So just like his father, David was humble. Solomon was humble. He's like, God, I, I can't manage these people without you. I can't do it without you. So he didn't say, because I have this title, this kingship. He didn't say, I have this title. Right? So he says, God, I need your help. I need your help. So what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. He says, God, I ask. So he says, so God said to him, since you have asked for this, he asked for wisdom. He says, not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for death of your enemies, but you asked for discernment and administering justice. Just, that's what we need. You're not selfish. It's not about you, right? I don't care what title you have. It's never about you. Don't ever, ever think it's about you. It's about how God is going to get the glory. God has to get the glory. So when we ask God, God says, what do you want? Brother Michael, whatever you want. What do you want? Don't, don't, ask, don't answer the question, right? Whatever you want. Right? What if God, when God, you say to yourself, you know, God's asking you, what do you want? Only you know what you want from God. Only you know. But whatever it is, I guarantee you, if it's selfish, if it's for your selfish gain, if it's for, if it's to elevate yourself, if it's for self-aggrandizement, right, it's not going to end well for you. It's just not going to end well for you. Like you had the rich man and Lazarus. Right? When you have that type of puffed up ego, it just doesn't end well for you. But when God says to you, what do you want? What do you want? Just say, God, you know what? This is what I want. But God, you know what? You know what I need. God, you know what I need. So because God, because Solomon didn't ask for, for fame or riches or anything for himself, God says, you know what? I'm going to give you that, and I'm going to give you more. You didn't think about yourself. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and everything else will be added unto you. So don't seek things first, and then say, oh, yeah, the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is not supposed to be an afterthought. 
seek God first in everything you do. Amen. Everything will be added unto you. Riches will be added unto you. It doesn't have to be money riches. It could be riches in health. It could be riches in the family. Look how Sister Bridget was seeking the kingdom of heaven and the riches of her family. She brought the riches of her family is coming into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's not always money. It's how I was looking at this TV show, these people who won the lottery, or what pe people who won the lottery, whatever. And it was like an older couple or whatever the case is, and they won the lottery, and it says the lady had, she ended up with cancer. So here she has the, all this lottery money, all this lottery money, and she has cancer, and fighting cancer. What is money? What is money? You have all this money, and you're not even healthy. Money doesn't mean anything. We have to always ask God, you know what, God, just give me health. Give me help. And then it says she went to the cancer treatment. She battled that. She fought that. And then it says two years later, then she cancer came back, and then she ended up with breast cancer. And so here she is fighting cancer again, fighting cancer again. And you have all these millions, and you can't even go anywhere because you're fighting cancer. So just seek God's kingdom first. Some people ask for money. Right, they ask for money. Yeah, we need money to pay bills. You need money. You need money. But you know what? Pay your tithes, right? Give your offering, and everything will be added unto you. God will give you an overflow. There was a time I, I couldn't barely put two nickels together. Way back, I was in my 20s, and I'm, like, I'm not paying no tithes. I'm not giving it to these, these people, and blah, 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 right? I was in my 20s. Maybe I was 18 or whatever the case is. And the bishop called me up. And he's like, um, and they pray for me, and whatever the case is. And I'm like, I'm not giving y'all nothing, right? Because that was my attitude then, right? So they prayed and stuff like that. And I said, okay, you know what, God, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. And when I started paying my tithes, I'm telling you, blessings and doors just started opening up for me. It just started opening, 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 opening in the corporate world, everywhere, every aspect of my life, right? As a single parent maintaining my house, I see couples were getting um, um, foreclosed on. Couples, and here I am by myself, right? By myself remodeling my house while couples are getting foreclosed on because I just clung to, to, to the word of the Lord. I clung to God's blessing plan. And if he did it for me, Sister Jasmine says, remember, if it's not of the heart, you are not doing anything. It has to be of the heart. Whatever you ask God, he knows your motives. He knows your motives, right? Who was the, who was the brothers? Um, um, Abel, Cain and Abel, right? When he had to give the, um, uh, the sacrifice, the first fruit, right? He knows their motives. God knows your motives, right? Um, my sister says Solomon was truly humble. And then she says, all else will be added. Sister Jasmine says, humble yourself before the Lord. Everything will be all right in Jesus' name. Just humble yourself. Even when you go into prayer, God, you know what? I come before you humbly as I know how. God, I come to you with a contrite heart. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my heart. Because a lot of us are carrying things throughout the week. right? We're carrying it in prayer. right? We're carrying it in prayer. God, you have to bless me. You have to purge me. Sister Rochelle said, paying tithes is a, ple is a blessing and trusting in God. She says, I have been there, being afraid, but he sustained me. God will sustain me. And when you go, when you, and when you walk anywhere the first time, because you're not, oh, um, you're not comfortable with it, you're not aware of it, you just don't know, you always have this little type of this fear, right? But just do it. Just do it, and God will sustain you. God will sustain you, right? Because we have to get to the lesson, then we're going to open it up, right? So um, a wise ruling, right? So I think that's it. A wise ruling. It says in 16, I'm just going to go through this really quick, okay? A wise ruling. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, pardon me, my lord. This woman, I live in, this woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby, and while she was there with me, 
The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone and no one was in the house but the two of us. Two women had a baby. Two women, they're in the house by themselves. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and she took my son from my side and while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and she put her dead son by my breast. So this lady did the old switcheroo, right? She did the old switcheroo, these two women. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son. This is not the son I gave birth to. The other woman said, no, the living one is my son. The dead one is your son. Oh my goodness, this is why First Kings is really good, right? It's always some drama, right? The dead one is your son. But the first one insisted, no, the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. And so they argued before the king. And the king says, the king said, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead, while that one says, your son is dead, my son is alive, right? <clears throat> so the king said, bring me a sword. Remember, he asked God for wisdom. Yeah. He asked God for wisdom. How would you all rule if this were, if you were in charge? Just a thought. What would you do, right? He asked God for wisdom. He said, bring me a sword. So they brought the sword for the king, and he gave an order. He says, cut the living child in two, and give half to one, and the other half to the other. Just cut the baby in two. Okay, you have a half a kid, you have a half a kid. How would y'all rule? Right? And the woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son. And she said to the king, please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other one said, neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Does that make sense to you all? Because I had to read that a couple of times. Even back then, I had to read it a couple of times. Does that make sense? So you had these two women. You had these two women, both had babies. One baby died. I have my baby, my baby died. The other one had a baby, that baby is living. While that baby is living and that mother is sleeping, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take the dead baby, I'm gonna tiptoe, and I'm gonna switch babies. I'm gonna switch the baby. Now I have, this is the living baby, right? Now I have the living baby. And when she wakes up, she says, this is not my baby. This is not my baby. You got my baby. She said, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. This is my baby. So they go before the king, and this is what's going on. Right? This is what's going on. And I said, you know what? When I'm reading this, first of all, there were two prostitutes. How did two prostitutes just get before the king? How did two prostitutes just come in front of the king? Because right? the king at the time, they were judging. They were judging. And this is just like the court of the law. You could go before the judge. Right? Because before back in like Esther, whatever, to go before the king, you have to go through all kind of, you know, protocol. Yeah, protocol, thank you, protocol, right? But, this, but Solomon, he was the king, so he was judging. So she says, no, that baby is mine. No, that, the living baby is mine. They, they're fighting over the living baby. All I know is the dead baby is not my baby. Whatever you have inside of you that has died, don't let it die. I'm saying don't let it die. The dead baby is not my baby. And a lot of us had desires or whatever the case is, whatever, dreams, aspirations, don't let it die. That's what I'm saying. Don't let it die. And what's yours, don't let anyone take what's yours. This is my baby. This is mine. And I'm gonna fight for my baby, right? But the lady, Solomon said, bring me the sword. I'm gonna cut the living baby in half. The mother who was, who had the live baby,
because she's a mother, she's compassionate, she says, no, 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 don't kill the baby. Don't kill the baby. But the other one says, kill him, kill him. You know why? Because her baby was dead anyway. So she's like, hey, you know what? My baby's dead, so it doesn't matter. That's how you could, that's, this is what was Solomon's first ruling to show how wise he was. She says, baby's dead, and my baby's dead anyway, so kill it. If I ain't gonna have no baby, it doesn't matter, you're not gonna have a baby either. And that's how Solomon knew who the mother was. Because the mother, her baby was living. I don't want my baby to die. I'm going to save my baby, right? So this is what the mother did. She says, no, don't kill him. I'm going to save my living child. And even like today, right, you don't have to kill your baby, save your baby. Amen. You save your baby, Take, give your baby up for adoption, whatever. You don't have to, there's some things that you don't have to do. Save your baby, right? And that's how Solomon knew who the mother was. Because right. the mother of the dead baby, my baby's dead anyway, it don't matter. If I don't have, if I don't have a baby, you ain't having a baby. That's how he knew, because she says, no, don't kill the baby. Don't kill him. She wants her baby to live. Don't y'all want your baby to live? Yes. Not so much, even your children, but your baby, your desires. You want it to live. Whatever dreams and aspirations you have, you can't let it die. You have to save your baby. And you have to fight for it. You have to fight for it, right? Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Because she says, don't kill him. It's my baby. She says, don't kill him. So God gave wisdom to Solomon to rule. And it seems like it happened immediately. This God? God bless you. Yeah, I I work on the chapter. He go down, he go down. And when the woman said, don't kill the baby, she said something to the kid. said, give her the baby. Now, when the child grows up, then the child will go nice. What is that? That the child will know what? He said, he said yeah, the, the lady, the, the mother of the baby, the mother of the baby, told the kid, so please, don't okay. kill the child. Mm -hmm. Now, give the child to the, to, to the other woman. Who, who is trying to claim the child? Mm -hmm. That when the child grows up, that the child will recognize the mother. The child will recognize the mother. Yeah. Yeah. It was at that point that the king said, This baby. You know, so this one was on the ground. Yeah. That's my little country. Yeah, so you're saying, so when the child grows up, the, from the Bible, from, go ahead, go ahead, where, from where it is. Okay, we're from, talking from where? From from from, from that part, from that chapter, that chapter, from that chapter. Okay, let's when, go to. Uh -huh. When the baby, when the when the mother was said, no, don't kill my child. But the, but the, 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 the king asked, what do you? This this woman said it's a baby, and it's okay. They're gonna put it into two. Right. And the, the other woman said, yes, go ahead and put it into two. Uh -huh. Now the rightful mother said, no. Don't, don't, kill don't, him. don't kill him. Mm -hmm. Rather, that give, they take the child and give it to her. All right. The woman who is claiming to be the mother. Right, that right, right. give it to her. Yeah. That when the baby grows up, uh -huh. that the baby is going to recognize mm -hmm. who the mother is. Mm -hmm. He's going to recognize his real yes, mother? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the Bible? Okay, let's just read it. No, I, 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 so I, I, have got, I have gone through it several times, but yeah, I can't so remember saying, where you're going, but I, but I know the history. I know the history. Yeah, so you're saying, so the rightful mother says, right. don't kill the baby. Yes. Okay. So don't, it, 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 she was telling the king. Right. So don't kill the baby. Please, because that, that was the first judgment right. that came before the king. Right. So the, 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 mother said, the mother said, my king, please. Don't kill the baby. Don't kill this baby. Right. Now, she's, her opponent is now claiming her own baby. Meanwhile, her own baby is dead. Right. Right. Okay. So the, the mother with the baby, 
the dead baby now would have the living baby. Yes. Right. Yeah, the, the, the mother of the dead baby wants to own up this one. Right. Because her own is dead. Right, right. Now, the whole issue led them to go to the king. Right, right. For a proper justice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Solomon have, been, you know, have already asked God for wisdom mm -hmm. in dealing with affairs in his kingdom. Right. Now, when this issue came up, the Bible wants us to know that that was the first uh -huh, ruling. That was the first ruling yeah. that, that came to him. Mm -hmm. So, now, in, in, the, in that wisdom he has asked God, mm -hmm. at night, God the great Solomon was battling with this whole issue. Who is he going to handle by this day? Mm -hmm. Before God said, go in this route. Mm -hmm. Right. So now when the argument mm -hmm. came up between the two women, mm -hmm. the, the rightful mother, the, 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 the owner of the the, the dead baby. Right, right. The king said, Now I'm going to cut this baby into two. Yes. Then give this to one half right. and give this one half. Right. What do you think? Then the other woman said, Yes, go ahead and cut it into two. Yes. Knowing full way that when you cut the baby into two, right. it's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still because her baby's dead anyway. So she wants both of them to be in the same shoe. Absolutely, yeah. Good. Now, the, the right, the Real mother of right. the baby. The live baby. Mm -hmm. Now who said, my king, no. Don't kill the baby. Don't kill the baby. Give her the baby. No problem. I'm going to enjoy it. Give her the baby. Uh -huh. Let her be with it. Let yes. her be with the baby. Uh -huh. That I went when this child grows up. Oh, he would know me anyway. That, that, yeah. that, that oh. she's, she's going to remain like that. That when yeah. the baby grows up, yeah, he that the baby anyway. himself, the baby himself, who recognized yes, the, yes, yes. the rightful mother. Yes. It was at this point that the king said, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was exactly what, how yes, the space yes, is yes. within him. Yes. He said, you are not the rightful mother. This is the rightful mother. Right. And he handed the, mother, the baby. Right. Over because him. right, the rightful mother didn't want her baby to be dead. Because yes. yes. her baby so, was so, alive. So even if, even if, even if the, the baby had to be raised by the second woman, First woman had enough love for the baby. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Because her, her baby is right. alive. So, so that gave Solomon discernment to know who the who mother the, is. Who the mother was. Right, because the first lady who, who had the dead baby, when she said, "Yeah, cut the baby in two. Cut right. the baby." It, it, it didn't matter to her, right. right? It didn't matter to her because her baby was dead anyway. So she's like, you know, my baby's dead. I don't care. If you, my baby's dead, your baby needs to be dead too, right? So the, mor the moral of the story actually is that God actually gave Solomon uh, wisdom and discernment right away. That, that's, that's right away. Yes. Right yes. away. Yes, because remember, when he went to go sacrifice, right, said he did everything in the ways of the Lord except, right, we have some exceptions in our lives, right, and he said, what do you want, Solomon? He said, I want wisdom. Right. I want wisdom. And right after that, the, the, um, the, the following verses, this is what happened. They had the prostitute with Eve, both of them had the baby, right? And so what happened when the lady, her baby was dead, it didn't matter if another baby would die. Right. Because guess what? My baby is dead. And if I'm going to suffer, then you're going to suffer with me. What's it called? Um, what, what's it called? Um, when I'm going through something, you want you want other people to go through it too? I forgot what that term is called. Mm -hmm. like shame on you. <laughs> it's a term, right? Yeah. If I'm going through something, you know what? I'm going through it. I want you to go through it too. Right? Uh, I forgot the term. So that's what it is. So just like the gentleman said, yeah, so when the baby grows up, right, he's going, even now, today, even now, today, we have children that was given up for adoption. And what happens? They turn around and they still go and look for their biological parents. Yeah. Yeah. Even today, they still look for their biological parents, right? So this is no different from Solomon's day to today. People still look for their parents.
parents, for the most part, for, you know, they still look, and if they, whatever the case is, but they still wonder, well, who's my, how does my mother really look? How does my father really look? You know, where did I get these traits from? How, why am I quirky, right? So people still look today, but because that lady had the love in her heart, she didn't want to see her baby dead. I don't want to see my baby dead, so you know what? I'm going to give my baby away, because eventually that child's going to grow up. It's going to yeah, grow at some, up. At some point. Yeah. Can't we talk about um, Moses? Can't we talk about Moses, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. It's the same thing with Moses. What's the difference, right? <clears throat> Moses grew up, right? He grew up under Pharaoh, right? And what happened was his sister and his mother still um, took care of him, and even though his Pharaoh's daughter was supposed to be Moses' mother, right, he was still close and knew who his mother was. Yeah. It's the same thing today. It's the same thing. So you want to keep your baby alive. And just like the gentleman said, yeah, the baby's going to grow up. Just like today, kids grow up and they look for their biological parents. They do it. Right. So that's how Solomon knew. Yeah, my sister said there's DNA testing today. Let Lord give me wisdom. Exactly. God, give me wisdom. We need, God, give me wisdom. Yes. What areas of your life do you need wisdom? We need every wisdom. Area. Every area. Every area. Every area. We need wisdom. How to conduct ourselves, our finances, wisdom, just everything. Wisdom. Wisdom, how to how to make choices. Wisdom, and as we you know, we know the story of Solomon. He had seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines, and it says that these women pulled him away from them, like a thousand women, like what? A thousand women. What? But that's not. But this is so real. So I think around chapter nine. Really? Yeah, Solomon. Well, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Solomon was. <laughs> Solomon, it says that he was building his palace, he was building the temple, and building the wall. Solomon was building. Okay? Solomon, and he was busy. He was a busy, busy man. But God has to give us wisdom because the, the Bible would tell you that these women that Solomon married pulled him away from the Lord. We need wisdom. Who? We have to even pray for our children. Remember, Abraham had told his servant, go and get a wife for my son. We have to pray for our children, that our children make wise choices, who they will choose to be their mate in life. We have to be, we have to be wise. One minute you could be coming to church, next thing you know, you hook up with an unbeliever yeah. or whatever the case is. And next thing you know, you're finding excuses not to come to church, but you're doing something else. And you think it's just a small, you know, a little leaven, but it leavens the whole lump. You think it's just a small little thing. Yeah. A small little thing. You have to be wise in who you choose as your friends, as your partners yes. in life. You have to be wise because I'm telling you, if you're not wise, you will damage your soul. Yes. But how do you get wisdom? You can't, you can't, you can't achieve wisdom unless you go through something. You have to go. You have to go through something. You have to go through. But, but you ask God, and God will tell okay. you. God will direct your path. God will tell you. You know what? Don't go there. That's not the right person or right place to go. Okay. God will okay. talk to you. But okay. what we do, what we do, right. we suppress what God tells us. And we go. And we try to make it. And, 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 we, and, and we do the opposite, right? We and we do the opposite. And something happens, right? right? Something happens. So now there's a lesson learned. Okay, there's a lesson learned now. So the next time it happens, or if it, ha or if it, if it comes up again, or if you see it again down the road, now you're going to know the, now you're going to know the difference. You're going to know what to do and what not to do because you have gone through something, and that's the only way that we can get wisdom. We have no, to go that's through something. Mm -hmm. That's what God said. That if we want wisdom, He said, "For we are to ask God for wisdom." Yes. Ask okay. Him. That's no matter who. Okay. Him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you ask God for wisdom. Yes. Now you ask God for wisdom. Yes. Now you ask God for wisdom. How does it get to you? He gets it to you. When you ask him, believe that you receive what you ask him. So if you ask for wisdom right now, say, Father, God, give me wisdom. I need wisdom. He will give it to you. He will give it to you. Oh, okay, okay. You just have to receive it. Yeah. 
direct your path. He will direct your path. He will direct your path. So who is the who is the leader of our team? As a Christian, in everything you do in life, you have to consult God. Everything. Everything. You have to consult God in prayer. Talk to God. He said, it is in the same way you are we're having this conversation here. It's the same way you can have conversation with God in your heart. So don't let it be daily busy. Depending the relationship you have with God. Amen. Depending on the level of relationship you have with God, you will have you will have you will have to see God communicate to you all the time. Praise God. Discernment is something that that God gives you. 
God gives you a discernment. It comes from heaven. It comes from so, yeah. it, it, it's, it's all from God. It's, yeah. all, it's all coming from God. Yes. Wisdom yes. is to be able to be able to make a decision upon something that you know that it it, it, it may become complicated. So let's look up the definition of discernment and wisdom. I think right. that's where the hiccup is, okay. right? Okay. My sister Rochelle, can you get me the definition of discernment and the definition of wisdom? Whatever it is, discernment and it says discernment and wisdom. That's what the Bible said. Yes. He gave him discernment, discernment not discernment or, or discernment or. and wisdom. Right. 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 So whatever Solomon used, he used what God gave him. And because of the women's reaction, he knew who the living baby belonged to. Absolute, absolute. And I see what you're saying. You're saying you need to go through to get to, to be experienced, to know the difference, right? right? But I see what you're saying, right? Because life teaches us, it beats us up and it teaches us, you know, um, not to do it, right? You put your finger in the socket, if you, you get electrocuted, so you say, you know what, I did it before, I'm not gonna do it. But I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. But God, Solomon was young, mm -hmm. he didn't have children. Mm -hmm. He didn't have children, and God still gave him the wisdom how to rule in this case based on their reaction, based on how they conducted themselves. I want to save the baby. I know this is my baby. You don't need to kill the baby. Save the baby. And because she had the compassion, yeah, she had the compassion. I agree. I, I, I am not disputing okay. any of what you're saying. Okay. You are absolutely right. I got to You have to go downstairs. Okay. My sister says sometimes the adopted kid always felt like they didn't belong, and when they are told the truth about being adopted, they understand why they always felt the lack of connection. Right? Wisdom is a deep understanding of knowledge of a subject. Discernment is the ability to determine the value and quality of a certain subject. So Solomon had both. Right? Wisdom is a deep understanding or knowledge of a subject, and discernment is the ability to determine the value and quality of a certain subject. I just want to thank God for the word. We have to end the lesson. Oh, this was good. We have to end the lesson. I thank God. Um, I just want to thank, thank Sister Siana, Sister Rochelle. Oh my God, Trini Rich is on. God bless you. God bless you. Um, Ish, that's Nana. Oh, Nana. Oh, I can't pronounce her name. Okay. She calls Nana Sims. Okay, God bless you, Nana. God bless you, Sister Jasmine, Sister Patricia, uh, Deacon McCoy, Sister Gladys, Sister Christine Campbell. Um, and there's more on, and then I won't know until I see. But sometimes people are on, and I don't know that they're on because they don't comment. I just want to thank you, you and you. We're going to thank God for wisdom. Yeah, thank you. And And we may not have to go through because God tells us he's going to direct our path. Right. Yeah. He's going to direct our path that you don't have to go down this dark valley. I'm telling you, don't go down the dark valley. Amen. I'm giving you wisdom and discernment not to take that path. I'm giving you wisdom and discernment. Amen. Don't hook up with this person. You know some people you shouldn't hook up with, but you say, you know what, I still could like work it out. Well, we could still work it out, work it out. And in the end, it don't work out. God talks to you. And it's up to us to listen. listen. Knowledge is power when applied. God gave us power. He gave us wisdom. <coughs> we just have to apply it. Amen. We have to Amen. apply it. We don't have to get beat up. We don't have to. That's not God's intentions, Amen. right? But we do it because we don't listen. Amen. We don't listen. And life, you know, just handles us. Amen. I just want to thank God for the word. We're just going to end Sunday school by saying, God, just give me wisdom. Oh, give me more. Give me more.